Hey guys, I'm Chris and this is Hacking IELTS. In this edition, we're interviewing an IELTS test taker in Dubai. Let's hear what our guest has to say about his experience with the listening section and what tips he can pass on to you. Let's start with a little bit about yourself. So who are you and what do you do here in Dubai? All right, so I am uh, Charles. I am um, originally from Nigeria. I moved to Dubai in 2011. Spent a few, few, I'll say, few years here, but was pretty much in and out uh, for the first two years, then became more permanent uh, in 2013. In total, I'll say I've lived in Dubai for about six years, and I work for an engineering company here. Uh, it's, it's great living here. So when did you take the IELTS exam? So I have taken the IELTS exam twice. I was going to ask if you've taken it <laughs> more than once or not. Yes, I have. Uh, so I did it in, in 2014, uh, October 2014, and uh, I did not get to use it because I just kind of went in there and kind of did my thing um, just to kind of try it out because I heard a lot of people talk about it. More importantly, I, I did it because of uh, the fact that, you know, I kind of got pressure from, uh, from you know, I'd say my sister had done it, you know, my uh, younger brother had done it. So I was like, okay, let me just try this out. And did you realize that it expires? Like every two years? <laughs> very, very good question. So I did not at the time. And, um, and I, I realized two years later that it, was, it, it had expired. It wasn't any more valid. Right. And that was the reason why I was like, oops, then I need to actually take it again. Um, so I did retake it this year, uh, okay. sometime in May of this year. All right. And we're going to get into that. I have to ask, did you take the general or the academic version of the exam? Uh, the general. As you might know, some people take the academic. Basically depends on their reasoning. Why mm -hmm. are they going to study? Are they going to immigrate? Do you mind me asking, why did you want to take the exam? Right. <laughs> Good question. So I have been thinking to immigrate to Canada or Australia. Okay, cool. All right, so let's start moving into the exam itself. Let's talk about the listening section. Mm -hmm. Regarding the listening section, did you struggle much with sections three or section four? One and two were pretty easy, Yeah. right? So tell me about that second half. Okay, well, I'll, I'll start by saying that the, the, the listening section um, of the IELTS exam is, is pretty... Uh, challenging, uh, for lack of a better word, and the reason is the whole listening process is only once. You get, it, you have only one chance to listen. Right, you get one shot. Right. Yeah. So, um, so yes. Back to your question, sections three and four a lot harder um, because of the volume of information that is being passed one time. You know, and you kind of have to listen really, really hard. Second of all, you need to know exactly what are the key points, the key words or numbers that you need to actually remember because they would be the answers you know so in a sentence of you know 12 words you could only have you would probably have to pick like two two or three uh keywords which be become your answer all right so regarding the accent mm -hmm. of the speakers right the voiceover artists uh, were they mixed or do you primarily have like one or two accents to be honest <laughs> it's it's kind of hard to remember exactly what accents I had, but I remember just one, which is more of a British accent. I think when you're preoccupied trying to pick the words, it's, yeah. it's even harder to you know, pay attention to the, to the accents. I don't struggle understanding accents in general, but I think the British accent is, is pretty... Um, I know some people do actually struggle with accents, mainly British or Australian. I've had students who said they really had problems with the Australian accent. The Canadian accent, well, it's not really that different from the American one. Right, right. Well, I, I guess my advantage is I work, I work for uh, an American company, but then it's, it's a very global company. So in my office, I have, I have Australians, I have Americans, I have Brits, um, I have Asians, I have Africans. So it's, it's a really diverse... Um, uh, workplace, and uh, I get to hear all these accents, so it, it, it helps, I guess, an advantage for me. So, Charles, did you actually have, like, any kind of strategy for the listening section prior to 
taking the exam? Yes. So I, I did look at some materials online on YouTube and uh, some ebooks, and I think the most important um, strategy, which I think everyone should make use of is having a quick scan of the questions um, so that you kind of have an idea, have a mental picture of what are the, the blank spaces and what should come before or after it, you know, stuff like that. Uh, because, you know, okay. yeah, I think that is probably the most important. If you don't look at the questions at all, I guarantee you'll be lost. Um, so it's trying to put the answer in context right. from before. Right. Or after. Right. It's like a puzzle, Got pretty it. much, you know, and you, you pick up the words and then you drop them in the boxes. So that's that, that's probably the, the, the strategy that worked for me. Is there anything you would recommend that candidates do in order to prepare for the listening section? Practice. Um, when I say practice, I mean go online, listen to at least three, four, or five different practice tests for listening. Because the more you do it, the better you get at, you know, hearing, listening, and, and just picking up the words quicker. So that would be my uh, advice. Hey, I hope what Charles shared has helped you to get some insight into the listening section of the exam. In part two of our conversation, we'll hear his experiences with the reading section and what tips he might suggest for you. Take care, guys, and catch you in the next one.